Today everybody walk to today's video. We're gonna take a quick break from the LS swap because in the last video I talked about how I'm waiting on parts. In the live stream, you guys have asked me about my log cutting jig. And I said I was gonna make one. I bought metal the previous year. I had good intentions of you know putting together a video of the upgraded version, but never got around to it. This week it's a perfect opportunity to go through step by step on how to make yours. Uh, go through some of the things I experienced with between making mine, which is the first gen, Aubrey's was the second, and this will be the third and final gen because it'll have everything done to it that won't suffer the issues that the other one had. Anyways, let's get started and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the generation one. This is the first one that I built. And the differences between this one and Aubrey's is that I made this out of a little bit thicker metal which I bought right here and the only other real difference that we're gonna do is that on mine and Aubrey's is that sometimes when you're taking logs in or out or especially when you slam them in these tabs bend so we're going to put a big gusset across there to reinforce it now this is set up permanently for about the average log sizes that we're cutting because your width of this determines how big of a log you're gonna squeeze in there. But however, the bigger the log goes up on the teeth. So depending on the size of logs you're cutting will depend on your opening. Now you can, obviously if you're gonna make your own, you could make yours adjustable, you know, maybe move it further backwards, drill holes, whatever have you not but I'm gonna leave mine in a fixed position. What we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the length roughly, give or take two feet. Two feet is gonna be the length of our rod. And this is the part that's gonna go into the receiver. I guess I should actually get my scribe ready here before uh, get too crazy here. I'm gonna mark our line before we cut it. Got our mark. Gonna put that in my chop saw. This distance here isn't really too important, but I'm gonna go two and a quarter, roughly. It's gonna be a little bit longer. I think it was like two and three eighths before, but make it simple. We're gonna go two and a quarter, mark it, Drill a three quarter inch hole through the center, and that'll be for the hitch. Pre drill it if you want to double check it, make sure it's going to line her up in there. Put our pilot hole in there. Anytime I'm going to drill a big hole, I like to go in steps, makes it easier on the drill and less frustration. Oh, I think this battery's almost dead. It's been sitting all winter. It's got a full charge, so it should be better. This is the true test of any drill bit is using something really big. Holes are drilled and confirmed, it'll work. This little front tab right there is four inches. We're gonna transfer that onto this piece right here, four inches and cut it. Now we're going to cut this section here and we're going to make it 14 inches. We're going to cut them at 45 degrees. These pieces are cut, 45s are put in. Let's take a measurement of these ones roughly. 
So those are roughly twenty one and three quarters, and these are two feet and a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it for that. Now we need to set the profile of the teeth and these ones here, not really too important because the log just kind of sits in there. So I found the easiest way to do it and cut it is to draw it out in one, use some Bessie clamps and then cut them out together. So I got everything scribed out. So what I went is two and a half inches from the edge here to here. This is three quarters of an inch down to this line here. Really your profile can be whatever you want and all these distances are one inch apart. And then just scribe out the line so you can cut them out. And that's gonna give us a profile like right there. I got a Bessie clamp. I'm gonna attach it outside and do it outside use my Milwaukee cordless grinder. And this job is best suited if you have a bandsaw, but if you don't, make sure you have lots of cutoff discs because you're gonna be using a few. So the profile on these ones here cut. I don't film doing that with a grinder because I've ruined many camera lenses by cutting so you're just gonna have to pretend you watch me and now we're gonna do this one here you need short teeth for this we're gonna lay that out and cut it that one's gonna take a little longer so i just drew out this and it's five inches from here to the end and then it's 15 inches that i laid out to here and it's three quarters of an inch down. So like I said, there's an, this is an inch space. So you guys can visualize and then cut a line, cut a line, cut a line, cut a line, and then down. And that's gonna give us this profile. And then the original one that I built, I held these together by bolts. But as you can see, this has become an issue. So when I remake it, I'm just gonna weld a plate on the back. So let's get this one cut out. Those pieces are all cut up. I was trying to TIG weld, but that was an ultimate fail. So we're gonna put the MIG back on, cause this sucks. TIG welding is a skill, definitely. MIG welding's definitely faster. I had to make a double pass here because I tried to TIG weld it and it looked like ass. As you can see up top, I TIG'd it and it did not turn out good at all. And then welded her up. You know, I'd love to learn how to TIG. It's gonna take a rainy day because you're gonna have to have a lot of patience and that's something I don't have. Moving along, we're gonna set this piece up. I apologize for the furnace running. It's back to being cold out. Now, realistically, you just set this up and tack it right in the middle. Make sure your hole is on the right side. At this point, I'm just tacking it up. We can move to make a more solid weld afterwards. 
want to fit her all up first before but you can start seeing the profile now I'm gonna tack weld this piece in right here and that goes on there and then the same opposite piece goes on top and that is to protect it strengthen it to keep these from bending outwards keep them a little bit more secure where you put it does not matter I'm just gonna somewhat center it right there in the middle So I brought this up as a reference. However you angle this here will determine the size of log you can fit in there. Now, however, if you got a log I found that's a little bit larger, then you can kind of tilt the log upwards and jam it in there. But I think, I think that'll be all right. One of the last things I need to do is put the gussets in on both sides. One of the issues I talked about before when using the log jig is that this piece right here would get bent from putting logs in and out, especially if you're rough. This is one inch flat bar, should offer some good support. We're gonna weld it right on the diagonal there. And uh, that should strengthen her up. Gussets are put into place. I even added a little tab up top. You can go full width if you want, just to kind of stop this end piece from bending in if you so wish. Everything's just tacked. I'm pretty happy. Let's weld her up. put a log in there basically about nine inches around because as I said before depending on how you set it up will determine the size of logs that you like to cut obviously something like this isn't gonna be good for big logs but for the pencils that we like to cut like this we just split them in four for like wood it's perfect however there might even be a reverse in four because it just came to me. If we cut it in here, right in half, put a smaller diameter tube in there, kind of like that engine hoist, so you can extend it out farther, which means you'll be able to stuff in even different sizes of logs. You can just like notch a corner out and shove her in there, but that could be for a rainy day. Other than that, First generation right there. This is third generation. Added gussets for strength. Shouldn't have any problems now out in the bush. Because I made Aubrey's a little thicker metal than what I used on there and wider. And he still had an issue with this bending, but these aren't going to bend in now. If you bend those in, some freaking strength. 
I don't know about you guys, that's motherfucking beer time. It's been getting nice out, so I brought some beer outside of the fridge. Since I didn't know winter, because I was afraid they were going to freeze. But none of the water froze over the winter time. But we're going to have a Hard Knox Brewery Dusty Trail. Alright, motherfucking beer time. We got an IPA. My favorite beer now. Ugh. Mm -mm. There you have it. I gave you the directions and measurements that I used to build your own log cutting jig. Now you guys can build your own. As always, be careful when you're out there because there's been situations where we've been cutting some wood and whatever have you not, once you get towards the end, there's not much weight on it. So when you're cutting the wood, the logs sometimes can fly out towards the end. Could be fatal if you're not paying attention. That being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. We should have parts for the LS swap next week. Continue on that. And that's it. Plugging away. That's all we can do. Steady as she goes. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.